got a northeast wind right now, about 60 degrees on the compass. 40 to 60 degrees. So that's northeast, windy, very unusual. Happens in the fall though, Santa Ana conditions. So this is set up by, you get a massive high pressure system that circulates and doesn't move. It circulates clockwise. And we're on the bottom edge of that high pressure system. So the bottom edge is blowing offshore. And it looks like Julia's out there with her spinnaker up. And just lift. Anyway, turkey day regatta. I did my first turkey day at age 11, 40 something years ago. Anyway, okay. People don't believe me when I say, or believe us when we say the 29er is underpowered. Look at the difference in the seals. A lot of people wouldn't believe it when they try a 29er for the first time, but it's actually an underpowered boat. It just takes a long time to break all the habits of everything else you've learned from a kind of boat handling standpoint. It's not opposite, but a lot of things are very, very different in a skiff compared to a normal sailboat. We finish on this side of the Turkey Day Regatta, and we start on this side. It's one of the unique things about their setup here. The boneheads. One bonehead boat didn't lead the retriever line forward towards the bow after they put it, rigged it, so their pole wasn't going out. We can't do that. So I am done with re-rigging people's boats on the water. Everybody else is less safe, especially when it's blowing 16 to 21. We just had a puff to 24 knots. It's now down to 14. The girls have capsized like 10 times, 1845. 24. But uh, they're ready to go. Got five boats. Our goals are our pre-race routine. They did a really good practice in that heavy wind. Everybody was trying to get their kites up. Everybody was speed testing the best they could, except for the boat that had to be completely re-rigged. 25 minutes it took me to re-rig their spinning one. Anyway, we'll stop then too. You just got to rig everything on land and triple check it. We've talked about it four million times. You can't win if you can't finish the race. If something breaks or you break something wrong. Best way to not win. Four of these teams getting ready. Four of these teams getting ready for March Bowl. You don't have to worry about twists anymore on the main. You just got to try to not let the main out too much, otherwise the jib pulls your bow down and you have to put the, push the tiller to leeward. You don't want to have to steer both directions necessarily. You want to be able to have the boat track. So that looks really good. Bottom of the main flat, the top really twisted. You gotta have the bottom of the main flat so that you don't have to eat the main very much. Here's Kevin and Jeff. One of the, Kevin's one of the newer teams in the last six months, newer skipper, seventh grader. He's got a little less twist because he's got a bigger crew. He's got Chet Jenny. Race 
won. Turkey Day Regatta. I'm impressed. Now we're in bad air, obviously. This is just the first race. And these guys had a rough sail out. They've capsized 10 times before race one already. But the bottom of the range is louder, so they have more bang on than the other group. They're just about too much to win. Breaking at the top a little too much. I think his jib could come in a tiny bit. Ronan shouldn't lean up at all, dude. He, he, I mean, his butt should be hitting the water sometimes. He's just looking at the water. Right now is a little bit of a light spot, but he, he's doing good now. But he doesn't want to release pressure at all. There we go. Main in, dude. He's letting the main out instead of having Will's lean on it. Will should be leaning on it before the small lead. The boats are underpowered. You need to fight the hike. You gotta get pressure in the hiking straps. Lifting up on the boat hard. Probably about 70 to 80% of your strength in the puffs here. And then just barely relax in the light spot. Little choppy. Race one, I-14's going. Banks be loose. See how the leech is popping out too much? Yeah, their banks be loose. They should go looser outhaul, more bang. And then now he's gotten into the, uh, he should just be going high in the flat spots when the water's flat and then barely pressing to speed up right before he hits waves and then let it climb back up again. But that's just too much twist for a guy that big. Jet's 190. So he could go less twist than that on the main. Cool. Race one, first windward mark. This is really nice. And look at Kevin and Jet getting up to speed. It's really what we're working on is being in race three mode in race one. Being ready for race one, no problem. Okay, so what we do now is look at their boom angles. Look, Anton's quite tight. Probably could crack the vang a little. Wills has got less vang on. You can see how it moves high. That's wild, because he had a lot of bang on on the upwind. Move forward it when you slow down. I know it sounds crazy, but it's just all about talking amongst each other and 
coming up with new ideas, sail for half a day, go back in, talk about it, change some things, go back out. Help those at the bottom. That's that, how he's always helping those in the back so that he has to sail better or his teammates have to sail better. So that when they go to the world, they're just that much better. Here comes the girls right here. I know this is a long video. They could go higher on the trap. Better to go higher on the trap and have the skipper hike in the puffs so you don't have to bend your knees too much. Oh, great spinnaker trim. Killing it on the spinnaker trim there. Jib looks great. Very loose. Top is luffing a lot. Their four stays moving quite a bit, so they probably need to put more turns on. So we'll have to remember that. More turns on the shrouds. Their four stays bouncing quite a bit. We need to look at that. If your four stays bouncing quite a bit, downwind like a lot, probably means you're too loose for your upwind setting. Probably means your four stays gonna sag too much on the upwind. Anyway, have fun here. It looks like Wills and Ronan have taken the lead easily. You're gonna see how much more bang Wills is going with. And so he might want to let his outhaul back off a little tiny bit. That's the weird thing about these boats again is they're kind of different than other boats, but when you put the vang on, you, the bottom of the mast bends and flattens the main so much that you have to go outhaul eased a little bit, which is what I think those guys should do. It's just not windy enough to have that thing too bow. And these guys look really good. Jib's breaking evenly. It might be luffing at the top a fraction, which is kind of, kind of the way it is. That was a great tack. He comes out of the tack, fills the main, and then you see him burp it pretty big. If it was lighter wind, these guys would want a looser traveler. You want to be closer to two blocked if you need power. He doesn't need power, so he's fine. A little tighter traveler means he doesn't have to use the main as much. The boom's going to be off center. Cool. So these guys, I would recommend just more you know, why it just literally just straight out, not moving in and out at all. Have Anton moving. And then on these guys also, Will's hiking harder when it gets breezy. But the wind is progressively lightening right now. So we got to be ready to maybe, you know, change our sail setup here if it drops another three knots. Ah, oh, the girls passed Kevin and Jet. I wonder what happened. These girls could just go tighter jib, a little less twist in the main, and put a little more power. That was a good first race, ladies. You know, I, I think that was just a good first race. We want to be in race three form if we can, but again, we're still kind of figuring out breeze. So I'm happy with that race. Not sure what happened to these guys. But we'll have to have the weather work. Got a little snow in the mountains. Less than a... I agree. Uh, it's definitely lightened up. This is nice. The girls should do better. So our goals for race two were different for each team, but a lot of it is get the twist right. I thought everybody's mainsail twist was pretty consistent, but don't twist too much if your skipper's not hiking. You gotta look back there. If they're not hiking, don't ease it. I mean, you, you might have to ease a little so you don't heal, but you gotta try to force them to hike. The boat feels really good. That's the problem. When you reach a, a skiff like this, the boat feels great. And then you're just sailing off the end of the earth. They're going way too low. So you gotta find a balance, but you gotta get the twist right. Um, Carly and Julia were trying to get the jibs a little bit tighter, like the top two teams were. You're still luffing at the top. You're just not luffing at the top hardly at all. Yeah, so he goes loose sails, accelerates, and then he'll slowly creep the sails in. Okay. These guys look similar with a little tighter jib. Will was faster downwind. So 
now it really depends on what, whose technique's gonna work. If we get lifted here, Anton's gonna gain because he's on a higher lane. He's on the inside. If we get headed, Wills is gonna tack and probably cross. The low mode works good into headers. The high mode works good into lifts. Okay, you got Kevin struggling here. He should get out of there. Or tack's closer to the mark, yeah. I have Bluetooth with him. No one knows. Yeah, see how the girls are tied in this race and they're hanging back. Very proud of themselves after 10 caps on this before the first race. And then they come out and just pull off like four jobs in race one. Yeah. These two have been sailing FJs like three days a week, so it's going to take a while to get out of the FJ mode. No, too much twist in the main for now. trim this shit out of the sails boat all the time. It's better to sail a fast rocket ship and get and, and therefore when you sail other boats it just slows everything down. Look at that dude. So what we changed from them from race one is trimming their sails slightly tighter, not letting the main out so fast. And then having the skipper hike more. They look good. Their jib is tighter this race. Their mains a fraction tighter. Their twist looks good. She's hiking a little harder. That looks good, man. And these two just look outstanding. I mean, they could be flatter, man. This is about their fourth regatta together. Still learning each other, but Carly flies the boat. Oop. It's a little choppy, man. Carly flies the boat like an airplane, man. She, I think she does some flying. She's got a feel for kind of carving the boat up wind. Kind of keeping it up, up on the wind really good without slowing down. It's really nice to watch. I mean, she has so much potential. I mean, she could hike and pull the main a little harder. If she would just launch on these guys. I mean, I think this is a lefty, man. I can't believe it. Third, but not by much. So now your goal on the tax, because the battens will pop no problem in any wind close to this. So you're not really roll tacking. See, those guys did a lot of roll tacking. I think you just keep the boat on its lines. Oops. Keep the boat on its lines. Keep it just flat. Just reach out of the tack a little bit. Much lighter, so you're obviously going to get forward right away. You really want the bow down. Winterhawk, Winterhawk, you've got 29ers. Big, big puff coming. So right now, I hope they see that. You got to be high, just like he is. Big hole right here. Wills is just going to take off here. Oh, 
always got to look at the top of the mast. Always remember, anytime you touch a halyard on a sailboat, you have to look at the top of the mast, whether it's on land, on the water. The crew has to look at the top of the mast as soon as the thing, as they ring the bell. If they're not sure they rang the bell, meaning they didn't get the thing hitting the top of the mast, then they got you got to look up. You got to make sure it's up. First thing you do is grab the sheet and look at the top of the mast and make sure it's up. Anyway, good job, ladies. We're going to get better every, every race. Will's gained more. Will's is actually faster upwind and downwind. Looks like they've been practicing a lot. Anton and Wyatt upwind, I think, are going a tick too high upwind. I think we got to find, we got to find a little lower groove. Um, this looks good, other than the spinnaker not up. And who knows? Maybe it's faster. Uh, probably not. Main's probably too tight. If you've got it that close to two block, I think that's just a little too tight. It stalls the main, so it makes the boat, you got to sail higher in order to get the boat up to speed. And that's also why we use the bang downwind, because if we have too much bang on, we have to sail higher in the light spots to regain speed. They did not need to change our shrouds. They are not overpowered. They're plenty fast. Oh wow, look at the girls. They've come right on to Kevin and Jen. Yeah. They're gonna be so happy. Jen's gonna raise himself up a mile. Sorry. This got a race. Yeah, we gotta power these guys up. They just misjudge the angle. So it gets lighter at the bottom of the course. You got to go into soak mode. So Jet would have actually moved, you know, way back here. He would have moved, uh, straddling the mast and the uh, kite way out, and gone into soak mode. So it's way lighter at this end of the course. So the end of race two, we got to. Well, we got to shift gears now because it's it's under 12 knots. But we've got to get Anton a better mode upwind. We gotta improve Carly, not much, but I mean, uh, she's close to second right now, dude. She's trucking. I tell you, I think I'm banging the left corner hard on these races. It seems like the left is just way better. Both legs, man. I could ride a bike. Race two, second upwind, and it is lighter. I think the jib needs to be a little tighter. Can't see if the jib's bluffing at the top. I would hike harder and not let the main out as much. That's the thing, you know, again, even 49ers, the thing they learn is you gotta fight the sails. And you can't, uh, you know, you gotta be using your body to make it so he doesn't have to let it out that much. You do exactly what you're doing, you just do it as little as you can. And over time you find the right mode, but you can't be let the main out six, eight inches without the skipper hiking. Yeah, there's a big 
big weight difference, but all you got to do then is just keep the main in and height. There we go. So that's what I'm going to suggest. Half as much ease on the main sheet. And if the boat heals, just height. Or lower your, get lower, but he's, he's already plenty low. Race two, long race, this is great. Guys look better. In the light spots, the crew's gotta get forward, so Sky's gotta move forward and put the knuckle in the water. She can see the knuckle easily right now. You can see the bows out of the water. Again, the 29er loves to reach. So you've gotta let, you'll see the difference with Carly is she'll let the boat climb up a little there when it gets ripped without healing to lure. You don't want the boat to round up or anything. You keep the thing flat and you let the boat climb up a little bit when you get it ripped. That's all right, they look good. You know, if we were a more experienced team, we'd be going out of all ease. Jib uh, in a half inch. I mean, we're really looking good. You guys just look monster headed on the car. So you just gotta you gotta point high here, you gotta stay up wind. Maybe footing into a footing into a lift. But anyway, this is good. Look how close they are. Way lighter. And Anton took the lead back at the lured mark. Looks like he's gained a little bit here. Now that it's like five or six knots, the boat probably just feels like a million dollars. They, you know, they're 50-ish pounds lighter. Race two, coming on the last upwind. You can see they are just flying. Pull out on the trap. The other guy's having to bend his knees. And it, it probably is just, you know, you go through moments where you're faster and lighter than the other boat, and the other boat's faster and a breeze when you are. It's a matter of figuring out why and being able to transition. guys this rake is further forward it would be interesting to measure the rakes on these boats you need to set it before regatta so it's it, you're trying to find the rake that works for your weight generally your skill you know whatever you think is a good setting and then just pretty much set it there for all regattas because you can't change it during the regatta anyway so you might as well just get good at kind of one rake setting bigger teams are going to rake forward more just like they're a bigger team these guys will be a little rake back so it'd be interesting to compare that race three it was a smoke and easterly this morning so this is julian sky blowing like 16 to 24 knots and now it's died off still east these guys have won both the first uh, one one race. They've got a first and second. Wills and Ronan, Anton and Wyatt, Carly and Kate have been really good. And 
this is Kevin and Jet Jennings. Race three, Turkey Day Regatta. These guys here are just big, you know, Jets 190. They're looking pretty good. They had their chip too loose and they were playing their main too much. In this wind, you can't, you know, you let the main sheet out an inch, it goes out five and a half inches up top. So you use it out three inches, I mean, you are dumping the side force of the boat. You need to keep side force on the boat. You can't keep anything. This was a great move. Oh, wait, this is Anton. The girls, the girls should attack under Anton. It's okay. Just killing him. But they should have led him back. They were already so far left that they think they, they would do what's called herding. They would attack under him, gave him just enough clear air, and then just tried to sail the wind from there. And these guys are in fourth place now. That's good. You see him checking the leech of the jib. Gotta make sure you're not twisting too much. You lose side force. Again, when we get everybody's sails in the right place, so these guys aren't necessarily slower. We're just helping the other sailors get their sails in the right place. A lot of people will reach these boats around. It feels really good. You let the jib and main out and the thing just takes off and you're like, yeah, but you're not going towards the mark. Now. Classic Willie McBride side force conditions over here. See, that jib could come in. I just lined that sucker up with a spreader tip. And then the elephant in the room here is being small is really good when it's under eight knots. The boat just lights up. I mean, you can just see these guys are Sailing away now. Still pretty good wind up here. These guys were pretty far back before, but now that they're not playing the main sheet as far out, keeping the side force on the boat, jib being a little tighter, and they got to the left. Uh, they're right in this race. They're still fifth, but it's close. The whole fleet's starting to get their sails closer. It's a little easier to get your sails closer when it's you know, six to nine, ten knots, nine knots. Once it gets windy, man, you start to see people with all kinds of different sail trim. Once we get overpowered, you start to see people all over the place. And that's why you just have to sail the boats a lot. You just tape off the shrouds at like 22 tension and you leave it there for a year. You don't even get the rake set right, maybe measure the rake, get the rake set right for rake back a little bit from, from base and a quarter inch back from a base setting or something. Tape that sucker off, put them at 22, tape them off, don't touch them for a year. Cut. Race three downwind. So these guys are actually trapping off the bar in the light spots the crew should lunt, like move forward quite a bit against the shroud and the light spots be right where he is just knuckle in the water in the puffs just like that the knuckles barely in the water in the light spots he should be moving forward getting the stern out of the water in the light spots raking the mass further forward boom is up in the air. You're going to notice on the other boats, maybe the boom isn't that high. Downwind, the boom should be up in the air. It should be above parallel to the deck. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but hers, her boom looks level to the deck. 
her sail doesn't look that flat. So um, if your vang is too tight, makes the bottom of the main too flat, installs the sail easier. See, she can be further forward. This is this is not. This is still side port conditions. This isn't. This is uh, so. I don't know if they believe me, but you should put that bow in the water in the lighter spots like this. Make sure the water line length is max water line length when you're underpowered. Also, get the stern out of the water. The stern's designed for nine knots, not six. Anytime it's less than nine knots, you gotta get the bow in the water. Maybe eight. They're using a different method. They might have overstood by just a little bit. I think these guys need, I mean, Cunningham's not gonna make a big difference, but they shouldn't have. The bottom of your main should be flapping, and when you go upwind, the bottom where you sew your mainsail around the mast, are, it should be flapping in light air. That's a minor thing. I think they just overstood by a little. His main is definitely too flat, too tight. So he needs way less outhaul, even for upwind. They gain though. It looks like the left pays upwind and the left pays downwind. I mean, the same side as okay. Yeah, Jib luffing evenly at the top. I think he's letting the main out too much. We just argued about it between races. This is a race. Race. So I don't know why the guys gained. I have a suspicion that the girls got in a light spot out over here. And uh, I suspect there's a westerly out there somewhere blowing the complete opposite way of this. And so what's happening is um, the wind is very light at the bottom of this course, maybe because of that. Yeah, see, look at that. Carly's one of the fastest upwind. She's not playing that main sheet hardly at all. Just a little bit. There we go. That was close to a good entry on that tack. You want to try to pull harder and slower as you go into these tacks. You're actually pulling the boat, giving the boat an apparent wind to lift just the right amount so the boat will carve around that the sail won't luff for a long time because you're leaning into the wind it fills the sail and then get it on the other tack without luffing the sail kind of hard to visualize just listening to it but these, these guys look really good for light air See that? Steady ease in the main sheet. She just lowered herself a little. Okay, let's see. I think they gained on the boys. Let's see. I don't think the boys are going that slow. I think there was just more wind and they had to tack out. This is race three. Now, if you look very carefully, I gotta remember to tell them this. Look at the leech and the jib. You're gonna see that the leech cord's too tight. I don't know if you can really read that or not, but you can actually see a cupping of the leech of the sail at the very end and this is either an old jib or it's another 29er sail where somebody cut the leech cord and i don't know if you can tell but between the between the battens you have this very like i can see the bend in the, you want the back of the sail to be straight side of the sail even so look at the bottom bat I can see the leeward side of the bottom bat even from straight behind so leech cord's too short um, don't move the windward uh, we're just getting into more wind but don't move the windward delta there we go second B the wind has come back up there's always more wind on the left and the girls did 
did gain some. This was a good idea right here. I think you're in the wind, so you go under them and you're now covering from behind. You are just making sure that you are not going to the opposite side of the course where you could lose double. You just got to match their VMG angle and speed the best you can here. And obviously it doesn't look great, but um, if you can just match her speed and angle, then you don't lose anything. Summerhawk from uh, Whaler 7, you really mean to start. There's the mark. So Portak is way closer to the mark. Anton looks like he's on this angle. He's not getting a big lift. Uh, the way you want to steer a 29er. Just her hand is six, eight inches from the tiller, kind of holding it down tight. Kate is awesome at everything in the light spot. She should be putting her weight forward. Anytime she's pulling the main in, she should be trying to get forward. Now I would. Yeah, there we go. It's windy over here, so yeah, she's doing great. She's flying it like an airplane man. And then in the light spots, when you bend your knees, just a half a step forward, try to push the bow down. As you start to you know, feel a, a big load in the boat, which you're not, you want to go back to that position where you are right now. kind of at the corner. If the boat starts rocking, just pull it into the corner. If the boat's not rocking, you could ease out a little, but you're just trying to keep side force on the boat. You know your main's too loose when you start getting really unstable, but you gotta fight the urge to just keep pulling and pulling and pulling the main sheet in. There, they look really good. They could be further forward. They're dragging the stern, I know. We're gonna talk a lot about it. But we got to do a lot of speed testing next to each other and work on that. How much do we put the bow down when we need Devin and Wills are swapped places here? So again, it was just all left upwind. There was just a, a line where the wind just stops. And, and I'm actually at that line now. She's, unfortunately, Julia did not get it. Carly and Kate just got locked in perfectly. Yeah, at least this is a good race. Uh, Kevin has the Vang much looser. His boom's higher. No, his boom's not higher. Will's just looks more stiff. I'm, I don't think I'm correct there. The spinnakers look pretty much the same. Wondering if Wills' tack line, his uh, luff line is too tight. I don't know if you can see, but the curl of his spinnaker is way up at the top, and Wills is more all the way down more. The windward edge being curled, and who knows what's the best, but you don't want you don't want the leading edge of the spinnaker to flap, but you also don't want that line too tight. A lot of people just set in one time. Eh, it looks pretty good. This will be our last race. We're going to head on in. The wind is two, one, two. quite light. Here come the... <laughs> you 
she's having fun today. It was a variable day, so that makes hard, makes it harder to learn and nail down what worked and what didn't. It's nice to have a couple days in a row where things are kind of steady and you're able to really nail down something. But the good thing about today is you had to shift gears from your technique in the morning. 